So let's talk about the way that Three Hearts and Three Lions influences Dungeons and Dragons. It's a, an important entry on, on Appendix N, I think. There are two big reasons that we should turn to this and think this is an important influence for D&D. Uh, not just because it's on Appendix N, but specific reasons. One, and the less important one, is... Uh, the bestiary, uh, some of the imagery, some of the monsters. The Swan May is obviously a direct take from the character Alianora, uh, who you know is a girl who can turn into a swan and back, uh, who's Holger's love interest. Uh, and the Swan May is a wonderful cre- uh, monster or, or creature, uh, I think underused. I'm not sure I've ever seen it in a module except for on an encounter table for Anthony Husso's Night Wolf Inn. Uh, but wonderful image. Uh, very fey, very um, sort of, yeah, British fey image. Um, it's where the troll who regenerates health but is scared of fire comes from. The Nixie, kind of water dryad or something, comes up here quite famously. Anson had a rich imagination and Gygax and company obviously drew on it. It's something where you can see uh, that uh, uh, Gygax has read some of the, these images and taken them pretty much straight over into things he wants to design. The bigger theme that's drawn, uh, in terms of directly drawn, is law versus chaos. In fact, we look at the original alignment system of Dungeons & Dragons through into basic as well, where you are lawful, neutral or chaotic. And here, law represents basically what, what we might consider good, but it's more nuanced than that. Law is a place where people can thrive, a place where there are, there's order and reason and people can get on with life. They may or may not be good people, per se, uh, but law is what you want to be in. Chaos degrades law, it destroys um, the opportunity to live a stable and happy life. So the forces of law, and Holger, the champion of law, are better than the forces of chaos. Uh, It's something which actually, in that stark juxtaposition, is maybe only nowadays highlighted in, in... genre fiction in sci-fi and fantasy in something like Warhammer 40k where you've got the the Imperium which is kind of evil but it is lawful and it does mean that it does create some opportunity for some people sometimes or many people some of the time to thrive in a limited way you know they may be stunted but they are alive and they're not twisted mutant abominations and that's something that Gygax draws on and you see that even, as I say, not after the early days, into basic with, I'm thinking of Keep on the Borderlands, where the image Gygax uses is the idea that these heroes are coming to the Keep uh, to help the forces of law defeat the forces of chaos, to hold back the darkness. Um, And it's a very striking part of the introduction to that that module. And I think that draw maybe leads on to the final point I'd make Appendix N-wise here, which is that Though, uh, and I'll talk about this when we talk about Conan and about Lankmar, Fritz Lieber, um, and the Lankmar, Fafford and Grey Mouser stories, though the sword and sorcery genre, the the idea of um, semi-criminal, uh, semi-amoral, very violent heroes is a strong influence on Gygaxian D&D, um, there is also that other tradition coming in. He mentions the ring cycle by Tolkien. Um, not Wagner, uh, but he mentions the ring cycle because, not just because of some of the images and so on, we can talk about that too at a later date, but because there is something of the heroic and high fantasy genre in, even in Greyhawk, even in Gygaxian D&D. It's there from the beginning. Um, Not everyone maybe recognises this, but I think it is. And I think you see it in that idea that fundamentally uh, the hero and adventurer is usually an agent of law. Uh, they're someone who is bringing order to the wilderness. They're someone who goes out and sets things right. Um, and uh, I think you see that with even remember even the bad characters in Greyhawk ended up fighting at the Temple of Elemental Evil. They ended up fighting uh, Loth and trying to stop the rise of her army in the original adventure there. And the same with the giants and uh, the drow cycle and everything else. I think that's the uh, and indeed the other you know various other adventures. Ultimately, there are chaotic and destructive forces, from out, often from outside in some way, pushing in, and the characters, even uh, evil ones, are kind of meant to stop them on the whole. Um, and that's not always the case, 
But I think it's telling that that is kind of sort of presumption in Gygaxian D&D. Um, as the joke goes, I don't want them to destroy the world, said the bad guy. It's where I keep my stuff. Um, and I think that's something which Gygax articulates very much, not through the Ring trilogy, as much as that's an influence in some ways, but through Law versus Chaos and Three Hearts and Three Lions. So a central dynamic of, not morality, but of just purpose and function in Gygaxian D&D um, is directly drawn from Paul Anderson. Did you have any other thoughts? Was there anything else to add? Tell me in the comments.